the way they twist the truth using their language is so fucking frustrating. Okay, here's the thing. They want to consider a 17-year-old girl with no disabilities a child, but they will not consider my brother a child. My brother, at 23, wore diapers, could not feed himself, could not speak, could not walk, still saw a pediatrician. Motherfucker, at one point, we went to my brother's doctor and inquired whether he would need a different doctor because he was like 20 at that point and still seeing a pediatrician. And normally, he would have stopped seeing his pediatrician long before that. Do you understand why he would have stopped seeing a pediatrician when he was an adult? Because pediatricians are for children. You stop seeing your pediatrician when you're no longer a child. But my little brother's body never left that stage. He never stopped needing his pediatrician. As a matter of fact, we were told that there was not one for him in the state of Jacksonville, Florida. In the area we lived, the only capable doctor for somebody with cerebral palsy as severe as little Ronnie's was a pediatrician. Because we were told people in his condition don't live to be adults. They don't live to be adults. Little Ronnie made it 23 years. But I will always see him as a child. Always, because in my mind. In my mind, all I see is his little face and his diapers and G-tubes and the facts. The facts. That there were four babies that went through that house that grew and developed while he didn't. And now they get angry at me if I refer to him as a child because they say, well, you're just trying to make it sound worse than it was. You're trying to make him sound like he was a baby. He was never anything more. But I can't describe him that way because that's accurate. And the last thing they want is accuracy in the stories. So while I'm not allowed to describe my severely handicapped brother as a child, they will continue telling you that a 17-year-old girl without any disabilities is a child. 17. No disabilities. You should not be allowed to tell people that is a child. When I married at 19, my ex-husband was already in a relationship with a woman who was younger than me. Obviously, younger than me would be underaged. His, her parents knew about him. I would take him to her house when he told me to. I never met the girl. But now they're saying that I was taking my husband to sexually assault a child and I should be in prison. When the reality was that I took him to a 17-year-old girl's house at her parents, her 17-year-old girl's parents' house. They all knew him. Whatever happened in that house, her parents allowed him into the house to do whatever was happening, and she was not a child. She was 17. My older sister had two kids by the time she was 17. 
It was perfectly normal in my mind for 17 to be sexually active because I was being sexually molested when I was two. I had been sexually active since I was two years old. When you grow up in that environment, it does not connect in your mind that it's not okay. There is no age limit where sex is okay when you started having sex at two years old. There's nothing that would tell me that what he was doing was wrong because I had already gone through all of this. <laughs> all those years at my parents' house with strangers coming in and out with my parents' own drugs so fucked up they didn't know what the strangers in their house were doing. Being left alone with men who they would trust with us kids but wouldn't trust with the drugs. <laughs> My dad actually told me once to keep an eye on the babysitter, make sure he didn't go in their room. And then when the babysitter went in their room after molesting me to the point that I ran away to my room, the babysitter went in their room and got to their drugs. When my parents got home, I was punished because I let the man take their drugs. And they had left their children with a man who they could trust with their children, but not with their drugs. I was seven. I was seven. And I will never forget Fred. Or any of their friends that they used to have come in and out. None of y'all understand what the situation is, but you want to judge, and you want to accuse, and you want to blame. I'm sorry about what happened to that girl when I was 19 and not understanding that things should be different. But it is absolutely not my fault that it happened. There were other people involved. I was not the only one, and as far as I knew, it was completely consensual. The man spoke to her on the phone every single night. She loved talking to him. She loved being around him. So how was I meant to know that it was not consensual? How was I meant to know that when I was 38, I would be punished for something that happened when I was 19 that I didn't fully understand or have control over because if I didn't take him over there, he would have beat me. And I just didn't want to be beat anymore. I had lived my whole life being beat, being screamed at. I just didn't want to be beat. Why does that make me a horrible person? Why does it make her a child, but it doesn't make my little brother a child? Why are they allowed to say that this 17-year-old girl was a child, but my 23-year-old brother was not? What is the difference between them? And don't say age, because there's not that much difference in age between 17 and 23. It's like five years. That's not that big of a difference. If you're not going to allow my little brother to be described as a child, you're not allowed to describe anybody else who is not a child as a child. But you do, and you do it to demonize and to hurt me. To make sure that people hate me. To make sure that people attack me. To make sure I wake up every day of my life with somebody who wants me to suffer and die for something I did not do. I never met this girl, so I never intentionally hurt this girl. I just didn't want to be beat anymore. <laughs> Now I'm 38 and I'm saying the same thing. I just don't want to be beat anymore. Emotionally. 
because that's what it is now instead of being physically it i'm waking up every day to emotional abuse emotional battering just every day because Adonis Paul has all of his friends that want to hurt me. He has convinced them I deserve to wake up this way every morning. He has convinced them I deserve to suffer. He has convinced them I'm a criminal who deserves to die. <laughs> and he'll say that he can't control his fans. He can control them enough to make them angry and hateful. He just can't control them enough to stop them once he gets them to that point. He can rile them up. He just can't bring them back down. And then the people that he's against are endangered and happen to do th go through this. <laughs> this cyberbullying, targeted harassment, nightmare of waking up every day to hundreds of people telling you you may as well just kill yourself because nobody's ever going to love you or care about you, following me out on the street, getting videos for me when I'm not posting to use for Adonis Paul. He's told me multiple times he has people here in Los Angeles that follow me when I'm not around him so that he can know where I'm at at all times. They get mad if I go to a dispensary in California where it's perfectly normal and legal. And that's just my life. That's the life I have to live because a man online told my story and lied about it and made money. And now because he did that, I have to suffer for the rest of my life with these thousands of people attacking me every day, lying about my life, making videos about me, lying about me, saying I'm a horrible person, and then using my defense of those lies as more further proof that I'm this bad person who deserves to suffer and die. I walk's not going to do any good. I am going to have to die for all of this to end. Adonis Paul is not going to allow me to survive him. That's what nobody understands. He's not going to let me survive this. He's not going to let me go. He's made too much money. His people are too invested they're not going to leave me alone, ever. <laughs> and I just don't want to be beat anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to be beat anymore. <laughs>